Hello everyone, I'm Ana Huertas and I'm here uh, representing the Municipalities in Transition project, which is a project that we have been uh, putting in practice from the transition movement. So trying to bring this eco-social perspective and regeneration perspective to the work that is done in communities. And it's a project that was born out of the shared understanding that we got from the different communities that the transition movement works with, that one of the main issues, one of the main uh, barriers that we encountered when we wanted to increase the, um, the impact of what we were doing was precisely working with the uh, public administration. And this was something that uh, more or less everyone uh, was facing up against. And on the other hand, we had uh, mayors, we had municipality officials coming to us saying, we have a lot of plans, we have this vision for a better future, a, a more regenerative future, and we just do not manage to get the people to participate and we do not seem to be able to uh, really bring people together to collaborate. So out of the, these two needs, uh, they converged in this project. So um, the project has been running uh, since uh, early 2017, and we started by identifying what systems were out there already trying to address this problem. How can we better collaborate between civil society and public administration because we all play with different rules we have often different values different ways of acting so uh, one of the things we did was realize that uh, not everyone not many people had a lot of experience in trying to to do things this way so what we did was uh, harness all the experience that uh, the communities of the transition movement had, and we also talked with some municipalities, and we designed uh, what is now called the Municipalities in Transition System. A system that is designed to respond to the local needs, so to deal with reality, with real problems, because this is something that municipalities often need. They are, are so... Um, worried with putting out fires that they often do not have time to really think about building resilience. So if we can help solve real problems while building resilience, while creating a different culture, a culture of regeneration, we will be moving forward in our uh, path of transition. So this system that we, that we have designed is based on a set of principles pursuing uh, a set of goals and is based on uh, systemic thinking. So the goals that we have set uh, for ourselves when we, when we started experimenting with this, because of course this is a huge experiment, is that we want every action that is undertaken to protect the community from the challenges we are facing, from, from climate change, but also from the peak of essential resources, uh, from poverty, from discrimination, etc. And we want to put the emphasis on the importance of regenerating the local economy alongside the regeneration and protection of ecological and social systems. Now, the principles we work with are those of the transition movement. The head, which helps us stay away from fake news and try to find the best available information and design our actions accordingly. And often, this doesn't always require to resort to uh, scientific research. Often, this also simply means bringing the community together and harnessing the collective intelligence that we are already have present. 
the, the knowledge that we need is not necessarily outside. It is very often inside, but we need to learn to listen. The second principle is the heart. Where all the information that we find, that we analyze with the head, before we do anything else with it, it needs to go through the heart. We need to create spaces of collaboration where we can work with compassion, where we can put life and care at the center, and we, where we take care of the emotional, psychological, and relational aspects of our work. Because we need to be aware that trying to change the patriarchal culture that we live in is very difficult, it's very taxing. It can be done, but we need to support one another. And finally, after going through the heart, we have the hands. We aim to turn our vision into something tangible. We need to manifest what we do. We need to see that there can be some results, even if they are small at first, because they are going to keep us going. They are going to support us in feeling truly that we are moving in the right direction and that our, our work can make a difference. Therefore, the system that we have designed aims to create a path for cultural change. So the first thing that we work on is creating a system for shared governance. So the people that we are going to work with are a team made up of representatives from different civil society organizations and representatives from the public administration. Of course, there are power differences. So the first thing that we need to do is use a system for shared governance where these differences are as leveled as people and people know that their voice counts. That is why we use uh, a system called Sociocracy 3.0 uh, that if you don't know about it, I really recommend uh, looking into it because it's, it, it is truly transformative. Talking about power is a little bit like talking about money. It's taboo, it's difficult, it uh, touches upon very deep things. That's why it's uh, such an important point that needs to be discussed from the very beginning. Then uh, we have uh, the grid, which is an electronic tool that helps us understand if what we are doing is truly working. Because sometimes we do things because we think they could be useful or because we want to replicate something that has worked elsewhere. And that is great as inspiration, but we need to have a way to truly evaluate if it is helping us to go in the right direction or not. The grid also helps to design new things, things that maybe uh, we did never uh, think about because for whatever reason, we uh, it, it was not where we were pu putting our focus. And this is very useful, especially for uh, people working in the public administration because it provides very concrete data both qualitative and quantitative. Then we have uh, other tools like the database, which is a set of tools that, uh, that help us determine what makes the most sense in our context. So we need to stay away from thinking that one solution can be applied everywhere. We really need to be very context specific. And we need to share what we learn what we do, the challenges that we face in a community of practice. And this is what we ha have uh, set up. And it's a place where people who are practicing with the system, with municipalities in transition, come together uh, to share. But it is also open to other people who are working in the same line and who would be interested to know more. So. Um, as I was saying, uh, the system that we use helps diagnose and evaluate what is going on on the field. It helps to co-design, truly co-design, so not simply uh, a small group of people asking uh, for, for ideas, but truly involving people in every step of the co-design process. 
And the same for implementation. There needs to be a sharing of power and resources so that people truly feel empowered to participate in their communities. As I said, we have the toolbox, but the final and most important function is that we are trying to attain cultural change. We are trying to break away from the patterns that perpetuate this uh, capitalist system that we are, uh, we are trapped in or we seem to be trapped in. We want to pinpoint all the different things that we need to change and that it's very easy to talk about when we imagine a new world, but then when things get tough, for example, when we talk about sharing power or sharing money or other resources, it is very easy to fall back to old ways of working, the kind of business as usual way. So what we're trying to do here is to create the perfect circumstances for us to notice these patterns and change them. So on for some, uh, some practical examples. In the first two years that we worked together with uh, several communities, we set up uh, six pilots in five different countries, uh, in Hungary, Italy, Portugal, Spain, and Brazil. So, for example, to give you uh, one, one example of, of something that was done in Kispest in Hungary, uh, through the, the use of the system, the city council agreed to use public space to turn it into a municipal uh, uh, gardens, edible gardens, so to grow vegetables. And then these vegetables would be used to cater to local schools whilst at the same time uh, giving, uh, producing jobs for uh, people who were at risk of exclusion. And this was uh, something that would not have been considered otherwise, given the right-wing tendency of the government at the time. So that was a result that we were very proud of. For the last uh, two years, we, uh, apart from the communities that we worked with in the first round, we had six new communities joining. So uh, in Portugal, in Spain, in Italy also, and uh, newer ones in Canada and Indonesia. So uh, just to give you an example from Spain, in Almocita, uh, in, in Andalucía, South Spain, uh, this was a town that was risking uh, depopulation. So they decided that they were just going to become the coolest town in the entire country so that young people wanted to go and live there. So using the municipalities in transition system, they identified the things that would be the most useful for the people living there already, but that could also attract uh, newcomers uh, to go and live there. And uh, so far, uh, the success has been amazing with several families moving there and uh, them receiving uh, several funding grants to continue doing their work. And then just to close, as I said before, uh, we have this community of practice for people to come and share uh, about their learnings and their challenges and to give support to one another. Before COVID, we used to meet in person, now we do it mostly online, but hopefully we'll be able to meet again soon.